U.S. soldiers and war casualties have been confirmed by other news organizations. His disinterest in finding captured soldiers has now been reported by the Washington Post and the New York Times. His discomfort with wounded veterans now confirmed by the New York Times. His asking what's in it for them while standing at, with John Kelly at his son's grave has been reported by the Associated Press and the Washington Post. The claim that the president didn't want to visit an American military cemetery in France in 2018 because it was, quote, filled with losers was also reported by the AP. Sources also told the Post and the Times that the president questioned the intelligence of those who served in Vietnam because unlike him, they didn't find a way to dodge service. And this is what national security reporter for Fox News, Jennifer Griffin, confirmed. I've spoken with two senior U.S. officials who were on the trip to France who confirmed to me key details in the Atlantic article and the quotes attributed to the president. My source, a former Trump administration official, told me when the president spoke about the Vietnam War, he said it was a stupid war. Anyone who went was a sucker. The president would say about American veterans, what's in it for them? They don't make any money. The source said it was a character flaw of the president. He could not understand why someone would die for their country, not worth it. Regarding the French trip to mark the end of World War I, according to this former official, the president was not in a good mood. French President Macron had said something that made him mad. He questioned why he had to go to two cemeteries. Why do I have to do two? Regarding the president's July 4th military parade planning, during a planning session at the White House after seeing the Bastille Day Parade in 2017, President Trump said regarding the inclusion of wounded guys, quote, that's not a good look. Americans don't like that. Meanwhile, the president yesterday continued to deny the report that he has disparaged the military, while at the same time criticized military leadership. The story is a hoax. We made up the story. It's a totally made up story. Who would say a thing like that? Only an animal would say a thing like that. There is nobody that has more respect for not only our military, but for people that gave their lives in the military. I'm not saying the military is in love with me. The soldiers are. The top people in the Pentagon probably are because they want to do nothing but fight wars so that all of those wonderful companies that make the bombs and make the planes and make everything else stay happy. I said, that's good. Let's bring our soldiers back home. Some people don't like to come home. Some people like to continue to spend money. One cold-hearted globalist betrayal after another. I really don't know so painful. what to say about that. It, uh, it just complete ignorance of the men and women who run our military. Um, you know, David Ignatius, and you know this better than anybody, uh, uh, I found in my years on the Armed Services Committee um, when we were getting briefings from generals and admirals, military leaders, they were the last ones who wanted to go into war. Uh, famously, Dwight Eisenhower uh, loathed uh, war because he had seen it so much. He was always the voice of caution. He was always the one uh, uh, trying to tell politicians before he was in the White House to send people to war. It is said that after the Korean War that he inherited, uh, not, an, uh, not another American soldier died in combat in the remaining years of his presidency. He, did, he gave the warning, the military industrial complex. Uh, he knew that civilians like Donald Trump and the presidency getting too close uh, to war profiteers and getting too close uh, to, as Donald Trump has done uh, with, uh, with a lot of uh, military companies, could cause uh, potential problems. Um, but David, even Colin Powell, who of course is only remembered uh, for uh, what happened at the UN, Cole, you know, George W. Bush was asked why he didn't seek Colin Powell's counsel more on the second Iraq war. He said, because I knew he was against it. I knew he didn't want us to go in there. And of course it was Colin Powell who had that famous showdown with our dear friend Madeleine Albright uh, talking about toy soldiers, saying, uh, again, the general who had been through Vietnam 
as so many of these generals had been through Vietnam, no, no, war is a last resort. And David, haven't you found that time and time again, as Donald Trump insults our men and women in uniform, that it is the generals, it is the admirals who have seen war, who are the last ones who want to go back there. Joy, you put it exactly right. There's a deep uh, conservatism and, and caution among people who've had to order their troops in the battle and have had to pick them up off that off that battlefield. And just to think about the little semi we heard from from yesterday. Put aside uh, Jeffrey Goldberg's superb reporting about what Trump said in the past. Put aside Jim Crandall's confirmation, uh, as we just heard, the Fox News reporter who, who found these same terms, uh, this, you know, military suckers for having gone to Vietnam, uh, to Trump's reluctance to, to go to the military. Put all that aside and just listen to what he said yesterday on camera. He essentially accused our military leadership of putting young men and women in, in harm's way, exposing them to, to, to violence and death, to serve the interests of war profiteers. It's really an incredible comment. If you want to take a, an instance of Donald Trump's contempt for the men and women who run our military, you don't have to go any further than what he said on camera yesterday. And it's of a pattern. Uh, in, in my reporting over the last four years, I travel often in the military. I would have been with the Central Command commander today if things had gone out the way, uh, worked out the way we hoped. I, I have heard more and more people who wanted to give Trump every benefit of the doubt, who were happy to have Trump uh, exercise less uh, authority, less uh, uh, in insistence, fewer meetings in the situation. And they, they like that. They, 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 and, and for the first few months, they really prospered under it. But the military saw something in Donald Trump. I, I think of it as a culture clash. They, they saw somebody who came from this instrumental world of New York real estate where, you know, everything's a deal, uh, everything's a transaction, and the military with its culture of professionalism, of sacrifice, just didn't get it. And I think the, the division began to widen uh, starting in 2017. It's gotten worse and worse. And again, let's not quarrel over Jeffrey Goldberg's quotes. Let's just listen to what the president said yesterday, and you'll, you'll, you'll know the essence of the contempt he feels for the military. Coming up on more.